Dr. Bannock. I'm an associate professor in the Department of Medicine, Division of Endocrinology at Northwestern Medicine, and I study the genetics of polycystic ovary syndrome. The recent advances in studying the molecular basis of PCOS have relied heavily on genetics. And one of the most important studies that has come out recently has have been multiple genome-wide association studies. I am a geneticist by training. I love figuring out how genes impact our phenotypes, and PCOS is really a phenotype. It's not a disease. It's, um, and so I am fascinated by trying to figure out exactly which genes um, contribute, to, contribute to PCOS, and also trying to figure out what they tell us about um, the subphenotypes of PCOS, you know, are people that have mutations in a gene like insulin receptor, which causes diabetes, are they more insulin resistant? Just trying to tease apart the whole syndrome aspect of PCOS and identifying the different subcomponents of that and the genetic causes of those. With the ultimate goal of, of um, figuring out more targeted treatments, or applying more targeted treatments. The whole process is just fascinating and sort of coming to the realization of all the different ways that you could perturb the hormonal processing of, uh, in, in a person to come to the final phenotype of PCOS. PCOS is more complicated than we thought. I started on this pathway 25 years ago and Every year, I'm sort of learning more, and it is more complicated than we envisioned. We are learning more actionable information every year, and so I think that leads to sort of hopeful prognosis for what can be done for women with PCOS. Since it is, it can occur in as many as 12 to 20 percent of young women. We've concluded from our most recent studies that the genetics of PCOS is really quite complicated. We know that multiple different pathways are mutated in women with PCOS. We hope that as we expand our genetic studies, we will get a more complete picture so that we, we can get a complete view of the molecular pathology of PCOS with the intent of, of leading to more targeted treatment for individual women. While it has been known for a long time that insulin resistance is associated with PCOS, it's not clear exactly how insulin resistance or the high insulin levels that you observe in insulin resistance leads to the hyperandrogenemia and irregular periods that are observed in PCOS. Now, one hypothesis is that the ovaries remain insulin sensitive, so they are reacting to all this excess insulin while the rest of the body is not. And so medication that can reduce or, or can increase the, the functionality of the insulin on the rest of the body can lower overall insulin levels and therefore normalize the ovarian hormone levels that lead to the hyperandrogenemia and the irregular periods. And those, once they're treated with those insulin sensitizing medication, these women start to ovulate again, their androgen levels are lowered, their testosterone levels are lowered, and they can become pregnant. Um, genetic research will be critical in developing personalized medicine for women with PCOS because it will allow us to identify the molecular lesions that are leading to their phenotype. And as we've discussed earlier, we know of already two different pathways that could lead to PCOS where we see genetic mutations. One is the insulin sensitizing, insulin resistance um, pathway, and the other one will be a pathway that is more reproductively um, important in terms of steroidogenesis and follicular development. And by knowing uh, for a given woman which pathway is impacted, we know whether we should treat them with uh, insulin sensitizing medication or focus on the reproductive aspects by IVF or, um, or, or treatments like that. And this would make the treatment for women with PCOS much more efficient. They wouldn't have to go through years of trying different things to see what would work. 
we would know which pathway to target in that moment. We're still in the process where we're doing a lot of sequencing and identifying variants and then figuring out whether these are true mutations, meaning they truly change what the cell does. We're also developing um, systems where we can assess what is going on when a woman has these mutations. We are co incorporating our findings um, in our work at Northwestern Medicine by using our the genetic information that we're finding to study what happens in the ovary directly. And we're doing that by taking samples from IVF patients here at Northwestern and looking to see what happens to their ovarian cells if they have a certain mutation. This is in collaboration with Christina Boots in our IVF um, clinic, who these are her patients, and she is sort of our advisor on all things IVF and also um, ovarian function. And so between the two of us, we're sort of merging the genetics and the um, biology of the ovary. My one parting piece of advice for clinicians who see this is, is to keep in mind that PCOS is a syndrome. It's a syndrome that is multifactorial and individual women with PCOS can get to that final outcome um, multiple different ways. And so it's important to view each patient as an individual with a unique, a unique um, path to PCOS.